Greetings, everyone. Let's revisit the topic of volume. Now, what I've listed here in this uh, first slide is the key that we talked about in class for finding the volume of a solid uh, using an integral, using calculus. Uh, the key here, of course, is that we want to integrate the area of the cross-section. So whatever shape the cross-section happens to be for the particular solid that we're generating, uh, if we integrate that uh, over the appropriate limits of integration, then we're going to end up with the volume. Well, the theory behind that we already developed in class, so I'm not going to talk about all of that right here. Um, so let's get right into the situation and see what's going on here. So let's we're going to do this several different ways, several different examples here. And so consider the region bounded by f of x equals the parabola 5 minus x squared, and g of x equals the exponential e to the x plus 1. The first type of examples we're going to do are through rotation. And so um, we're going to write an integral for the volume of the solid formed by rotating this region about. And we'll do several different um, examples here. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the lines that we're going to revolve this region around uh, shortly. What we have to do, though, before that is we have to think about the picture that uh, the, the area that we're considering here. So um, let, let me let let's sketch this out. We know what these things look like. We know that the parabola is you know five minus x squared. Let me make it a little, a little bit better. Um, just intercepts the intersects the y axis at five. You know it looks like a typical parabola. Um, <laughs> I could do better than that. I would hope, and that's a little bit better. The exponential. We know how that is supposed to look, and so um, it. Normally, the exponential would intersect at 1, I'm sorry, 0, 1, but since we're shifting it up 1, it's going to inter intersect at 0, 2, and then it's going to look something like this. So obviously, we have two points of intersection, and we want to find those two points of intersection uh, because we're going to need those values to evaluate the, uh, the integrals that we're going to do. So what... What we're going to be, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set the two values equal to each other, or the two equations equal to each other. So e to the x plus one is going to have to equal five minus x squared. This is not something you're going to solve by hand. This is something you're going to want to use the technology for, and so uh, you should be practicing with your calculator so you can become more proficient with it. And um, the easiest way, in my opinion, to do this uh, with, a, with a calculator, if you're comfortable with your calculator, or rather not too comfortable with your calculator, uh, would be to just graph the two functions on the same screen and then use the calculator's intersect command um, or intersection command to figure out the x-coordinates of the point of intersection. Um, you might need the y-values also, but um, initially just looking for the x-values. Um, so go ahead and get that done. So here are the values that I found using my technology. Notice I'm not stopping my uh, approximation until after the third decimal place. I don't even want to stop it at the third decimal place. If you're preparing for the AP Calculus exam, our final answers need to be correct to three decimal places. And if I stop at three decimal places now, then when I use these values in my calculations, uh, more than likely I will not have three correct decimal places through just the fact that I rounded prematurely and then there's an error in the answer. And as I use that value to do other calculations, I'm going to accumulate more error. And so I always try to carry at least four, ideally five, decimal places in all intermediate calculations so that when I give my final result and round it to three decimal places, it will have three decimal places of accuracy. All right, so this is uh, these are the values we're going to need. Now, one thing that you can do for the AP exam, if you're preparing for that, instead of having to write these numbers over and over again, you could define them with uh, a variable, a letter. It's a really a constant, of course. So you can just say, you know, we're going to let A be equal to negative 1.96464 and B be equal to 1.05801. And then when you write your integrals, you can just use A and B in place of those numbers and then 
the reader will know you define them, that's what those values mean, and they'll have a clear understanding, and it'll save you some time um, and, you know, the hassle of writing out, you know, six digits in writing the number down. All right, so the first line that we're going to revolve the uh, region around is going to be the x-axis. So the x-axis, of course, that's at y equals zero, okay? Um, so let's go back and take a look at the picture here and see what's going on. Every time we go through one of these, I've tried to teach you to draw in the, um, rectang the rectangle that we're going to be using to do our measurements with. Now, we're rotating around the x-axis over here. And so I want to draw the long side of my rectangle perpendicular to my axis of revolution. So the long side is vertical, the axis of revolution is horizontal. So they're perpendicular. And that's going to be our general uh, way we draw the rectangle for disk method or washer method. Now, I always tell you to draw in your delta x so that you have an understanding of the variable that we need to have in our integrand. So since we have delta x here, we're going to need our expression for our integrand in terms of x, which also means our limits of integration are going to be x values, which we've already calculated here. A bit prematurely, I guess, because you didn't know if we were going to need x or y, and we wouldn't solve for y, but I sort of alluded to that earlier. So it's this rectangular region that I need to imagine revolving around the x-axis. Now, since there exists at least one rectangle where the edge of that rectangle is not right up against the axis of revolution, then this is going to be a washer method. It has to be a washer method because I have a rectangle here that its edge, its bottom edge here, doesn't touch. Actually, both edges don't touch the axis of revolution. And so there's going to be some uh, region that is not included in sweeping out the volume. So there's going to be a hole in it, in other words. So I need to have, for the washer method, you know, we still need to find the area of a cross-section. And so my cross-section in this case is going to be um, a washer or a circle with a, another circle cut out of it. So I need an outer radius and an inner radius. And my outer radius goes from the far edge of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. And the inner radius goes from the short edge. And I've already drawn that one down here. That was the first brace that I drew. I just messed up a little bit, but um, that one will be my inner radius. Now remember, when we're going to calculate these radii, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to measure. I'm trying to measure a distance, okay? I'm trying to figure out how far this far edge here is to the axis of revolution. So I'm trying to figure out this length. And since the length we're calculating is vertically measured from top to bottom here, I need to do the calculation here as top minus bottom. And so what, what bounds the top of this rectangle? Well, the top of this rectangle is always going to be, wherever I draw it, along the parabola. And so the top region here is going to be the parabola 5 minus x squared. And so what do I subtract from it? Well, I, act, I subtract from it the bottom here, which is now coming from the axis of revolution itself, y equals 0. So it's really just 5 minus x squared, that quantity, minus 0. And so I'm not going to write the minus 0. That's my outer radius right there. Now similarly, the bottom edge is always bounded by... Actually, let me not put that line there. That's always bounded below by the exponential function. And so wherever I draw this rectangle, the bottom edge is bounded by the exponential, and therefore this is going to be the, uh, the exponential top minus the bottom, the axis, which just gives me the exponential, e to the x plus 1. And so now that I know my outer radius and my inner radius, I can go ahead and start working on the volume integral. So now I'm going to integrate, and this is an approximation because my a and b aren't exact values, okay? So I should have approximately equal to. I'm going to integrate from a, a was the negative value, to b the positive value, the lower one minus the upper left, uh, left and right, however you want to look at it right now. 
Since we're revolving, finding areas of the cross sections which are based off circles, pi is going to be a factor here. And then the pattern is the outer radius squared, which we said was given by the parabola. So 5 minus x squared quantity squared minus inner radius, which we said was given by the exponential. So e to the x plus 1 quantity squared. And then we are doing this with respect to x. And there is our volume integral. If we plug that into the calculator with, of course, the numerical values for a and b, then we will get the volume of that particular situation, um, or that, that particular scenario. All right, so that's a, one example. Let's try another one, okay? So what if I wanted to revolve about... Oops, I need to switch my pen back. Revolve about y equals negative 4. Okay, so we've shifted the axis of revolution down four units, okay? Looks like I'm going to need to go recreate my picture. Um, let's see. All right, so here's the picture. And for, um, you know, you can see we're revolving this around the line. This is negative four down over here. I made, you know, the picture looks a little better, I think, this time. But I still want to draw the long side of my rectangle so that it, it is perpendicular to the axis of revolution. I'm still going to mark my delta x. I still want to approach this in essentially the, the same way. So I need to measure the distance from the outer radius, which is the far end, the distance of the far end to the axis of revolution. And then I need to measure the distance of the close end to the, to the axis of revolution. Wow, I can't seem to draw the brace in that direction right now. There we go. So those are the two distances I need to, to generate. So the first distance, the outer radius, um, will give us top of the rectangle bounded by the parabola, so 5 minus x squared, and then it's minus negative 4, okay? That's how we measure that distance, top minus bottom. And then over here, this is going to be e to the x plus 1 minus negative 4. We can simplify those, of course. And so now that I know my outer radius and my inner radius, I can go ahead and set up my volume integral. And so my volume will be approximately the integral from a to b, pi because of the circular rotation, outer radius. Now this time, my outer radius was 5 minus x squared minus negative 4. And so minus negative 4 is going to be a plus 4 quantity squared. And of course, you can add the 4 and the 5 together to put a 9 in there if you want, but I'm not concerned about that at the moment. And then minus, our inner radius is going to be need, need to be squared also. So it's e to the x plus 1 minus negative 4 or plus 4. You can, of course, make that a 5. And then, of course, we stick in our dx on there. And that is how we would find the volume if we re revolve this around y equals negative 4. All right, so what if we now revolve it about y equals 7? Well, how would that look? You should, go, you should go try to work this out. Pause the video and go try to work this out. All right, so starting with the picture, drawing in the axis of revolution, um, drawing in our rectangle. Axis of revolution is horizontal, so our the long side of a rectangle is vertical. I'm going to label this short side in the direction it moves. It moves in the x direction, and so I label that with a delta x. So now we've got to be careful here. This is where some students start to um, maybe become a little careless and not look at things carefully. I'm re revolving around this, you know, y equals 7 here. And so I need to measure for my outer radius the distance from the axis of revolution to the far edge. It's always going to be that way, okay? From the, out, from the axis of revolution to the far edge. So that's going to be my outer radius. Now, yes, I'm using the bottom of the rectangle, where over here I use the top of the rectangle, but the consistent concept, and you've got to focus on the concept, is that I'm always measuring the distance from the far edge of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. And that's what I did here. That's what I'm doing here, the far edge to the axis of revolution. 
And then to get the inner radius, this uh, similar concept, I'm going from the close edge to the axis of revolution. So those are going to be my two radii that I need to write the volume integral for this particular situation. So now how do I calculate the outer radius? Well, as before, it's top minus bottom. Here, the top, though, is 7, and the bottom is our exponential. Better put parentheses around that or distribute the negative or else you're going to make a mistake. So then my outer radius is 7 minus the quantity x squared plus 1. And then my inner radius measures the distance of, from the axis of revolution to the close side, which is bounded by the parabola. So this is going to be 7 minus the quantity 5 minus x. Whoops, the squared goes on the inside for that one. Like this. So now I have my outer radius and my inner radius. We can go write the volume integral. So our volume integral from A to B. We've still got those same A and B values. It's the same region we're moving as we had earlier. Pi times, what do we have here? The outer radius. We said that was 7 minus the exponential. Quantity squared now, because we've got an outer radius squared. And then we have to subtract from that the inner radius, which we said was 7 minus the quantity, five, the parabola, 5 minus x squared. And then we need to square all of that. I need another set of parentheses and a dx. I, I, I squeezed it in on my screen. I hope it comes out in the video. Um, there is a dx on the end of this thing. All right. Same, same concept. Outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. Hopefully you're generating these answers. The very first type of volume uh, problems we were working on um, dealt with not, rotate, not rotating a region about an axis, but instead of being told what the cross-sectional shape is, where the base of the solid is sitting in the xy plane, cross-sections. This might sound familiar. Suppose the region we have been using is the base of a solid sitting in the xy plane. Find the volume of the solid if cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are in, in you know various different uh, regions could be or cross sections could be used and we'll do a couple of them just so you could see the the process. Um, but let's take a look at the picture. Now you have to appreciate how every time I draw this the the, the, it looks sl slightly different, but anyway. Okay, so we were told that cross section is perpendicular to the x-axis. Perpendicular to the x-axis, that's an important phrase. If it's perpendicular to the x-axis, that means the long side is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So we would draw our typical rectangular slice in this direction here. If the problem said that the cross sections were perpendicular to the y-axis... I would draw them so the long side is horizontal and do everything in terms of y, but this one is in terms of x. All right, so the key to this is to relate the length of the long side of this rectangle to the cross-sectional cross -section, cross shape that's given. What we want to do is write the area of that cross-section in terms of this side length as a function of x. And if we can do that, all we have to do is integrate and we'll be good to go. Let's suppose for a moment that the cross sections that we are dealing with here are squares. Real basic example. Sometimes ends up on the AP exam though, so we should be able to handle it. So if we're dealing with squares, that means this side length that I've you know, put the brace to measure um, the vertical side of this rectangle that would be the side length of one of the side lengths of the square. But since it's a square, we know it's got to be every side length of the square. All four of them would have that length. Additionally, we also know that to find the area of a square, we just have to square a side length or multiply base times height. But base and height are going to be the same. So once I calculate this measurement here, I just got to write the area of the square and then integrate. Well, how do I find this length? Well, the top is bounded by the parabola. The parabola is 5 minus x squared. And the bottom is 
bounded by the exponential, which is e to the x plus 1. And so this is just 5 minus x squared, that quantity, minus the quantity e to the x plus 1. That's that length. All right, top minus bottom, same thing we've done. The top is bounded by um, the parabola. The bottom is bounded by now the exponential. All right, so if we're talking about the area of a square. We can draw this out. That's just something squared, and that something is going to be the 5 minus x squared minus e to the x plus 1. That length that we just calculated, that's the area of the square. That's the area of the cross-section, side squared, base times height. Length times width, however you want to note it. So that means our volume is going to be approximately, I don't know if I did that in the last couple, uh, but the integral from A to B, remember A and B are just approximations themselves, so our volume would end up being an approximation. A good one, but still an approximation. But for volume, okay, going back to this, for volume, all i got to do is integrate the area of the cross-section. I got the area of the cross-section, it's right up there, so that's all I have to integrate. So... It's just this. Now, you can simplify this a little bit if you want, but remember on the AP exam, you don't have to simplify unless they say to. And so I would just, you know, just do things correctly and write it down and don't bother to waste the time or, or potentially risk a mistake uh, by trying to simplify. That, that, that's it for the volume of the squares. It's that integral right there. It's that simple. Um, notice there's no factor of pi. We don't have any circles here, so uh, pi isn't, you know, an issue isn't going to come up in this problem. Just find the area of the cross-section and integrate. That's it. Now let's suppose for a moment that our cross-sectional shape that is, you know, perpendicular to the x-axis are not squares, but rectangles. If you try to think about this carefully, if I just tell you that we're dealing with a rectangle, you really can't solve the problem. I haven't given you enough information because in order to find the area of a rectangle, I need to know its base and its height, its length and its width. However, you, I need to know its dimensions. Now, if one of the sides of the rectangle is this length that we calculated here, that vertical side of the uh, rectangle that's sitting in the plane, that's fine. That's our base, this length here that we've already been dealing with. Um, this one here, this is this is going to be the length of the base or the bottom of the, of the rectangle. But what am I going to do for the height? I mean, the height can really be anything. So this is where, if I just said rectangle, you can't complete the problem, at least to get an actual numerical value. Um, you, you could, you know, write a, a variable height or, a, you know, put in a, a letter for the height and then write an expression in, in terms of that letter, uh, but that's not what I intend here. So let's let's actually give you this. So let's say rectangles with a height of three units. So if I'm dealing with rectangles with a height of three units, how do I find the area of the rectangle? All right, well, the area of the rectangle is base times height. Okay, so the base is this quantity that we already calculated, 5 minus x squared minus e to the x plus 1, top minus bottom, that's the base, and it's just base times height for the area of a rectangle, so base times 3, because the height's just 3 units, and so that's it, the area of the cross section, so now I just got to integrate the integral from a to b, if you want to put the 3 before the integral symbol is a constant multiple rule, you can, or you can just put it over here, or you can leave it on the end. It doesn't really matter. But this is, this is it. Just with respect to x, found the area of the cross-section. So when you're dealing with a shape, you have to be able to find the area of that shape, okay? And if I said rectangle, it's not enough information by itself. I have to give you some more data. If I tell you square, that's plenty of information. What if I told you, what's another shape? Um, we did uh, isosceles, no, I'm sorry, we did an equilateral triangle in our notes. And so it wouldn't hurt to review that for a moment. How do we find the area of an equilateral triangle? I'll, we did this in our notes, but I'll run through it. Um, 
since we're dealing with an equilateral triangle here, all the sides are the same. And so um, if I call this side over here S, and then I drop in a height over here, by one of your geometry properties, this is going to be half of S. Uh, my S is kind of look like 5, so I'm going to go back for just a moment here. Let me get rid of this. I'm going to use a different letter. Let's call it, I already have A and B for a moment used. Um, let's call it T. Okay. So that means this side over here is going to be half of T. Now remember, this is equilateral triangle that we started with, so that's a 60 degree angle. The angle up here is going to be 30, and so you hopefully remember that from uh, your special right triangles that the height, or rather the long leg, is going to be root 3 times the short leg. Here our short leg is this half of t, and so I need to multiply half of t times root 3, and that will give me the height. It's kind of sloppy, I apologize. But let's work this through. So how do we find the area of a triangle? Well, it's half the base. Now the base is the entire triangle here, not just the half t, it's the whole thing. T, you know, because it's one side of the equilateral triangle. One half base times height. We just said the height was, I'm going to rewrite this as root 3 over 2 t, which is equivalent to what I was writing up there. And so then for an equilateral triangle, it's always root 3 over 4. When you do the arithmetic here, t squared, where t is the side length of the equilateral triangle. And so once I have that, we're good to go. Go back to our relationship over here. This length that we're dealing with over here is one side of the equilateral triangle. If that's one side of the equilateral triangle, that's t in our formula that we just generated. So root 3 over 4 times t squared. And so what's the area of our equilateral triangle that we're dealing with here? That's going to be root 3 over 4. And then we got our 5 minus x squared minus e to the x plus 1. That quantity squared, top minus bottom, gives us the length of the side. We want root 3 over 4 t squared. This is t in the last set of brackets, parentheses there. And so then my volume integral is approximately equal to the integral from a to b root 3 over 4 times the quantity here we get this 5 minus x squared minus e to the x plus 1 that quantity everything squared and with respect to x and that's how you would find that one so just find the area of the cross section whatever shape it is and then once you have that in terms of x using the functions that are appropriately bounding the region that we're using as the base of our solid all you have to do then is uh, you know, integrate that area of the cross section, and you're going to have the volume integral. You're going to be correct. Go find some more to practice. Okay, if this comes up on the AP exam, you should be, you know, going through the steps, drawing the region, finding the intersection points if necessary. Sometimes they give it to you, um, and then uh, drawing your rectangle, putting in delta x or delta y, whatever is appropriate. Finding the area of the cross section and going through all the steps. Make sure you understand it step by step. Try to recreate some examples and go through them until you get it right every time. You can do this. Go study.